Hello all, I'm Gunama Divanan from Office of IAS Academy. Friends, we are coming up with an exclusive live quiz program based on current affairs targeting 2024 prelims on a weekly basis. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. in our Office's Path channel, we will be coming up with this live quiz program. So how to participate? So for which you have to install an mobile application. So go to uh, either uh, App Store or the Google Play Store to download this application named Kahoot. Kahoot application. Download and install it. Right. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. In the live video, I will be giving you a seven digit pin. So you have to enter that seven digit pin in your installed application. In that Kahoot application, you have to enter that seven digit pin. Or we will give you a QR code. If you are not interested in installing the application, you can scan the QR code in the web browser. You can open the page, web page. In that, you can enter this seven digit pin number and you can participate in this quiz program. So once you enter the seven digit number, the application will ask you to give a username. So you have to give your username followed by your username. Please give your last four digits of your mobile phone number. For example, my username is Guna8990. The last four digits of my phone number. So like that you can create your own username. That's all. You are ready to participate in the quiz. So in the live video, so in the live video, I will be showing you the question. The question will be followed by four options as usual A, B, C, D. The four options will have a color code, right? So option A, red color, option B, blue color, option C, green color, option D, yellow color. So the four options will have four different color codes. So in your mobile phone, you have installed the Kahoot application, right? So the Kahoot application in your phone, in your device, it will show you four colored box, only four colored box. Only in the video which you are watching, in that live video, I will give you the question followed by that four option. I will be giving you the four option will have a color code, right? So if you are going to choose A as the right answer, then A as red color, then in your mobile phone, you will have a red colored box. You have to choose that. That's all. If the answer which you have chosen is correct. And if you have chosen that quickly, for every question, we will give you 60 seconds. Assume that I am choosing A, A is the right answer and I am choosing within 20 seconds, within 10 seconds based on how quickly I choose the question. I have to choose the correct one and I have to choose it as early as possible. So the one who is choosing at the earliest will be given more points. So if I am choosing in 20 seconds, I will be given more points. If someone is choosing at 30 seconds, then relatively lesser points, right? So this is how the quiz will work. So at the end of the uh, program, we will show you the leaderboard. Between the questions also, I will show you the leaderboard. At the end, I will show you the final leaderboard. The one with more number of points will be given a certificate, right? The idea of the quiz program is to provide you a real time experience of solving the questions along with that competitive environment. Right? I hope this program adds more value to your preparation. So along with this, we have um, a daily uh, current type of list series, daily answer rating initiative. So all these initiatives will give you a competitive edge in your 2024 prelims as well as mains. Right? I hope this adds more value to your preparation. So see you in the quiz. Till then, bye. Take care. Hello, good evening everyone. I welcome you all to the office's UPSC quiz today. Today, uh, I will be your host today. My name is Rakul. I am part of R&D team at Officers IS Academy. I hope you are aware of the uh, rules of the quiz. There will be 15 questions. Each question will have four options and, uh, and they are uh, given by the unique color code. And you have to, you have to select the color, correct color code based on the given question. Uh, so, I'm, I hope you are aware of the procedure to join the quiz. You have to use your Kahoot app. 
there is a seven digit unique id you can use this id to enter into the quiz or you can scan the qr code given in the given below okay let's uh, wait for few more seconds to start the question people are joining people are coming in Welcome Sakaria, welcome Dr. Akshaya, welcome Isaac, welcome Kirtana, welcome Achu. Okay, I think it's fine. We'll start the quiz now. Let's start with the first question. The first question. We are starting now. The first question. The terms Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki and Hambali refers to, it is a 30 second question, you should be aware of that. There are four options, option A is types of nobles in the Bahmani kingdom, option B is some schools of Islam, option C decorative motives in Mughal architecture, option D types of markets in the Sultanate of Delhi. I repeat the question, the terms Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki and Hambali refers to last 4 seconds 3 2 1 and 0 the time is up let us see the correct answer now the correct answer is option B Islam, uh, some schools of Islam Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki and Hambali are different schools present in the Islam religion based on this there is different interpretations of the religious scriptures based on these schools these schools uh, interpret the Islamic literature in uh, some different different ways. So these four are the Islamic school, Islamic schools. So looking into that uh, number of uh, 27 people have given the correct answer for this question that is option B. I congratulate all of them. Uh, around 10 people have chosen option A and option D. I hope this is uh, this makes them aware of that uh, correct answer that is option B. That is, these are the schools of Islam. Now let us uh, go to the scoreboard. At, the, at present, Isaac is in the first place. Kalaiwalan is in the second place. Karthik is in the third place. Jauhar is in the fourth place. And Kavya is in the fifth place. I congratulate all of them. I hope uh, they continue to give correct answers in the upcoming questions. Uh, now, let us move to the second question. Second question of the quiz. Which one of the following is not a classical dance? Option A is Odyssey. Option B is Satriya. Option C is Mohiniyattam. Option D is Kalvelia. This is another, this is another 30 second question. Be fast. Answer the, give the correct question properly. You have 10 more seconds. I repeat the question. Which one of the following is not a classical dance? Odyssey, Satriya, Mohiniyattam, Kalbelia. Last 2 seconds, 1, 0. Time's up. So, let us see the correct answer now. The correct answer is Kalbelia. Kalbelia is not a classical dance. It is a part of uh, intangible cultural heritage which has been recognized by either UNESCO. There are eight classical dances uh, which are recognized by the Sankit Natak Academy. Those are Bharatanatyam, Kathakali, uh, Mohiniyattam, Kathak, Satriya, Odisha, Odissi, uh, then uh, Odissi, and then uh, Manipuri. These are the eight dances uh, which are uh, recognized as classical dances. Kalvelia is not a classical dance. And uh, it is a dance famous in uh, Rajasthan state. Uh, it is uh, it it is like a snake charmer's uh, dance. Like uh, the dance, uh, the people who are performing the dance use costumes like dance, and they also uh, act like uh, snakes. So, thirty-seven people have given the correct answer, and some sixteen, seventeen people have chosen uh, Satriya. I hope uh, they get the correct answer that Satriya is a classical dance and Kalvelia is not one. Now let us uh, see the leaderboard now. 
Kavya has come to the first place, Jawhar is in the second place, Kalevanan is in the third place, Isaac is in the fourth place and Kavya Priya is in the fifth place. Uh, that is a good one. Congratulate, I congratulate all of them. Uh, Prithika has is the highest climber in this uh, question. She has jumped six eight places. I congratulate all of them. So second question is over. Now third question. We can go to the third question. It is a polity related question. Which of the following writs? is not specifically provided in the constitution of India. This again is a 30 second question, keep it in mind. Which of the following writs is not specifically mentioned in the constitution of India? Option A is mandamus, option B is quo warranto, option C is injunction, option D is certiorari. 10 more seconds for you to answer. Which of the following writs is not specifically mentioned in the Indian constitution? Last one second, zero, time's up. The correct answer is injunction. The correct answer is injunction. Uh, mandamus, quo warranto and certiorari along with prohibition and uh, habeas corpus are part of uh, are, are writs mentioned in the article 32 of the Indian constitution. So that is clear. Uh, injunction is the correct answer. Uh, in this question, 57 people have given the correct answer. I congratulate all of them. Only very few have given the wrong answer. So I hope uh, these people will know the correct answer from now. Now let us uh, see the leaderboard now. Uh, there is a little change in the top 5. Kavya is in the first place. Isaac is in the second place, Jawahar is in the third place and Kalevanan is in the fourth place, Kavya Priya is in the fifth place. There is little change, all uh, these uh, same four or five members are coming, uh, coming up again and again. We will see in the upcoming questions whether new people are coming and deseating them from these positions. Now let us go to the next question, fourth question. It is again related to polity. The establishment of the interstate councils can be best explained as an exercise in. It is a, again a 30 second question. The establishment of interstate council can be best explained as an exercise in. The options are option A, administrative delegation, option B, direct democracy, option C, cooperative federalism, option D, democratic decentralization. We have 5 more seconds to answer, 4, 2, 1, 0, the time is up. Here the correct answer is option C, cooperative federalism. Interstate councils were created under article 263 and it, uh, it, is, an, uh, it is a tool to create uh, cooperative federalism. It creates smooth relationship between the states so that the issues between them can be sorted out even before going to the judiciary. So it is about uh, cooperative federalism, administrative delegation, direct democracy, direct democratic decentralization are all related to local self local self governing organizations, which are which were created under uh, which were created under 73rd and 74th amendment of the Indian Constitution. 47 people have given the correct answer. I congratulate all of them. Very few numbers have given the wrong answer. Now uh, let us see the leaderboard for this question. Still Kavya is in the first place. Kalevanan has come up. He has come to the second place. Kavya Priya has also come up. He is uh, she is in the third position. Jawahar has gone down. He is in the fourth position. Adi has been has come new to this uh, top 5, he is in the 5th position. So I hope everyone is clear about interstate council. Now let us move to the next question, 5th question. 5th question, it is a geography or map related question. Crimean island which is often seen in the news is located in which of the following seas? It is again a 30 second question. 
Crimean island which is often seen in the news is located in which of the following seas? Options are option A Caspian Sea, option B Black Sea, option C Mediterranean Sea, option D Baltic Sea. 10 more seconds for you to answer. Crimean island which is often seen in the news is located in which of the following seas? 2, 1, 0. Types up. Uh, the correct answer here is Black Sea. Crimean island is in the Black Sea. It is. It was part of Ukraine. Now it has been annexed by Russia. It is uh, separated from Russia through a strait called Kerch Strait, Strait of Kerch. So uh, it has been a, a scene of war since 2014, Crimean War. There is an issue between uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine over the particular island. It has been completely annexed by uh, Russia from uh, 2014. So, 36 people have given the correct answer for this question. Uh, some 10, uh, 10 and uh, 11 people have chosen Mediterranean Sea and Baltic Sea. I hope uh, they come to know that uh, this particular island, Crimean island is related to Black Sea. Now, let us uh, see the leaderboard. Kalevanan has come to the first place. I congratulate him. Kavya has has gone to second place, Adi has improved two places to be in third place, Abhinaya has come in new into the top 5 and Shankari has also come in new to the top 5. I congratulate all these people along with the people who had given the correct answer for this question. Now it is time to go to the next question, we can go to the question number 6. Question number 6, it is about modern Indian history. Wagon tragedy is associated with which of the following events? It is a 30 second question. Option A is revolt of 1857. Option B is Polygar's revolt. Option C is Mopla rebellion. Option D is quit India movement. I repeat the question. Wagon tragedy is associated with which of the following events? Option A, Revolt of 1857. Option B, Polygor's Revolt. Option C, Mopla Rebellion. Option D, Quit India Movement. The correct answer for this question is uh, Mopla Rebellion. In During the Mopla Rebellion, uh, uh, the, the protesters or the rebels were taken in a jam-packed uh, railway compartment uh, from the Mopla region, that is Northern Kerala region to a central prison in Coimbatore. During this journey, many uh, uh, the compartment was jam packed so that the people could not uh, breathe well. So around 70 persons died in the, in the travel. So this came to be known as a wagon, tra wagon tragedy. Some people even call this as the Jalian Wallabag of South. So wagon tragedy is related to Mopla rebellion. Around uh, 33 persons have given the correct answer. Some 15 people have given uh, Polygas revolt as the answer. I hope you get to know that it is related to Mopla rebellion. Now let us move to the scoreboard. Kalevanan has maintained his first position. Uh, Shankari has come to the second position. Uh, congratulate her for the uh, Im improvement in the rank. Sujit has come to the third position, Bhavitra has come to fourth position and Kavya Priya has come to uh, fifth position. I congratulate all of them. Now uh, let us move to the next question, question number 7. Consider the following statements about the basic structure doctrine of the constitution of India. Uh, it is a 60 second question. Uh, statement 1 is, the concept of the basic structure doctrine was introduced by the Supreme Court in the Golaknath vs. State of Punjab case. Statement 2, it falls outside the scope of amending powers of the parliament. Statement 3, the Supreme Court mentioned in clear terms the constitution of this doctrine in the Kesavananda Bharati case. How many of the above statements is are correct? Uh, option A is only 1, option B is only 2, option C is all the 3 and option D is none of the above. 
20 seconds more to give the answer. The question is about basic structure doctrine which was given by the Supreme Court. Have 10 more seconds, 5 more seconds, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The time is up. Uh, the correct answer is uh, option A, only one is correct. Because here, the concept of basic structure doctrine was introduced in the case on the Bharati case. So, statement 1 is wrong. It, is, it was not introduced in the Golaknath case. Second statement, it falls outside the scope of the amending powers of the parliament. That is true. Supreme Court has mentioned that basic structure doctrine is outside the scope of parliament. Any amendment to the constitution cannot amend the basic structure doctrine. So, statement 2 is correct. Statement 3, the Supreme Court mentioned in clear terms the constitutions of, uh, constituents of this doctrine in the case on the Bharati case. Actually, it is not wrong. Uh, the, it is uh, not correct. Uh, the Supreme Court has not mentioned in clear terms the constitution, the constituents of uh, this uh, doctrine. It was added in further cases like the Minerva Mills case and the uh, further cases, uh, the, super, uh, the constitutions of the constituents of the basic structure doctrine were added. So, statement 3 is incorrect. So, only one is correct. So, option or answer is option A. 15 people have only given the correct answer. 31 people have gone, gone to option B. So, I hope they will be knowing the correct answer uh, from this explanation. Uh, now, let us uh, move to the uh, scoreboard. Kalevanan is still in the first place, Shankari is, is still in the second place, Shud Sujit has come up to the third place, Manihandan and Kartik has come up to the fourth and fifth places uh, respectively. Pragadish has come uh, 16 places up, he is the highest climber in this question. I congratulate uh, all these people. So, I hope everyone is clear about the basic structure doctrine. So, let us move to the 8th question, the next question, 8th question. So, we are jumping to economics in this question. The term catch up effect is often seen in the news. Which among the following statements correctly explains it? It is a 60, 60 second question. Option A, foster growth of developing economies than those with higher per capita income levels. Option B is competition among stock investors to catch up before the stock prices increase. Option C, corporate sectors trying to push over one another in the capital market. Option D, banks trying to increase the interest rate during the period of inflation. You have 25 se more seconds to answer this question. Catch up effect related to economy, what does it mean? You have four options. 15 more seconds, catch up effect, 7 more seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The time is up. Uh, the correct answer is option A, option A, catch up effect, which means that developing economies uh, try to catch up uh, the development which was already present in the developed countries. So, they will be having a faster economic growth in the, grow in the during their uh, developing phase until they reach the status of a developed country. This uh, faster growth period is known as catch up effect. Catch up effect. Uh, so, 26 persons have given the correct answer. That is option A. Some 19 people have given the selected the wrong option that is option B. I hope uh, they are aware of the catch up effect now after the explanation. So, let us uh, see the scoreboard now, how it stands after 8 questions. So, Kalevanan is still in the first place, Sujit has come up, he is in the second place, Manigandan has also come up, he is in the third place, Karthik has also come up, he is in the fourth place. Shankari has gone down, 
she is in the fifth place. Uh, so, uh, Deebak Haran has come up 11 places in this question. He is the highest climber in this uh, in this few last few questions. So, let us uh, move to the next question that is question number 9. Question number 9. Uh, it is again related to economics. Which among the following statements best describes Pareto efficiency? Which among the following statements best describe Pareto efficiency? It is a 30 second question. Option A, an economic state where resources cannot be reallocated to make one individual better off without making at least one individual worse off. Option B, an economic state where the GDP of a country has achieved its maximum efficiency with respect to its labor force. Statement Option C, an economic state where the demand and supply match perfectly. Statement D, an economic state where the employment potential has achieved its maximum efficiency. The time is up. The correct quest answer for this uh, question is option A. Pareto efficiency is a state when, uh, when you can't allocate a resource for, uh, for when you can't reallocate a resource from a particular sector to another sector. If you take from one sector, it will take the, it will affect the another sector. So that there is complete utilization of the capital. There is no excess capital to be given for development of another sector. So, option A is correct. An economic state where resources cannot be reallocated to make one individual better off without making at least one individual worst off. So, option A is the correct answer. Uh, only 13 people have given the correct, an uh, correct answer for this question. 16 people have gone with option B, uh, 14 have gone with option C and 13 have uh, gone with option D. So I hope uh, Pareto efficiency related, relates to reallocation of resources from one sector to another sector or one group of people to another, pe another group of people. I hope uh, the people who have gone wrong in this answer uh, knows the correct term, of, uh, correct definition of the Pareto efficiency. So let us see the scoreboard. Kalevanan is still in the first position. Karthik has come up. He is in the second position now. Kavya Priya has re-entered the top 5 now. She is in the third place. Shankari is in the fourth place, she has gone uh, up one place and Sujit is in the fifth place. So I hope everyone is clear about uh, Pareto efficiency. Uh, now let us move to the next question, question number 10. It is again related to economy. Consider the following statements with regard to bond yield. Statement 1. Yield is the amount of return an investor will realize on a bond. Statement 2. The bond yield and bond prices which are inversely proportional. The bond yield and bond prices are inversely proportional. Which of the above statements is are correct. So option A 1 only, option B 2 only, option C both 1 and 2, option D neither 1 nor 2. Consider the following statements with regard, with regard to bond yield. Have 25 more seconds to answer. Yield is the amount of return an investor will realize on a bond. That is statement 1. The bond yield and bond prices are inversely proportional. That is statement 2. You have 10 more seconds to give the correct answer. Bond yield. 4 more seconds. 3 times up. The correct answer here is option C. Like that is both are correct, both the statements are correct. Yield is the amount of return an investor will realize on a bond, that is correct. Bond yield and bond prices are actually inversely proportional. As the bond prices go down, when a, uh, when a person uh, sells the bond when he is in urgent need of money, the bond prices will go down automatically. So the yield of the particular bond remains the same. So as the second person got the bond for a lesser price, the bond yield for the second person is actually higher. So this shows that the bond prices and bond yield are inversely proportional. 
with the fall in the price of bonds the yield in the associated with the particular bond rises so answer is option c both 1 and 2 are correct now uh, let us see how many people have given the correct answer 34 people have given the correct answer i congratulate all of them around uh, 13 people have given one only uh, i hope they are aware now that that the bond yield and bond prices are inversely proportional so now let us move to the scoreboard for this question after 10 questions kalaiwanan is still in the first place Karthik is in the second place, Kavya Priya is in the third place, Shankari is in the fourth place, Manikandan is in the fifth place. Shatish has a streak of eight correct answers in a row. I congratulate all these people. Uh, now let us go to the eleventh question. The next question, eleventh question. Eleventh question. It is a geography related question. Consider the following statements regarding Afar triangle. Afar triangle. It, uh, it is a 60 second question. The statement 1 is Afar triangle is a geological depression covered by the Afar region of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti and Somalia. Option B, uh, statement B. This depression houses the lowest point in the world, Lake Asol of Djibouti. You have two statements and four options. Options are uh, A1 only, uh, option B2 only, option C both 1 and 2, option D neither 1 nor 2. Have 20 more seconds to give the correct answer. Afar triangle. 15 seconds. Afar triangle. You have 7 more seconds. 5 seconds, 4. 3, 2, 1 and 0. The time sub. Afar triangle. Consider the following statements. Afar triangle is a geological depression covered by the Afar region of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti and Somalia. Actually, Somalia is not, part of, not a part of uh, Afar region. Only Ethiopia, Eritrea and Djibouti are there. So, statement 1 is incorrect. Statement 2 this depression houses the lowest point in the world, Lake Asal of Djibouti. Actually, Lake Asal of Djibouti is not the lowest point. It is actually the uh, Dead Sea. Uh, it is uh, Lake Asal is a saline lake and it is 155 meters uh, below sea level, making it third lowest point in the on the earth. So, both the statements are correct. Here, the question uh, asks you to choose the incorrect answer. So. C is the correct answer. Both 1 and 2 are incorrect. Option C is the answer for this question. Around 19 persons have chosen the correct answer. Option C. 21 person have chosen, persons have chosen uh, option A. I hope uh, they come to know that both 1 and 2 are incorrect with respect to Afar triangle. Now let us uh, see the scoreboard for this question. There is a change in scoreboard. First position, Karthik has come to the first position and he has a streak of 9 correct answers in a row. I congratulate Karthik. Then uh, Manigandan has come to the second position. Shujit has come to the third position. Kalaiwanan has uh, gone down to the fourth position. Another Sujit is in the fifth position. I congratulate all of them who are given the correct answer. I hope they are now aware of Afar triangle which is present in the Afar region of Ethiopia, Eritrea and Djibouti. Somalia is not part of Afar triangle. Then it is not the Afar triangle is not the lowest point of the on the earth. It is actually Dead Sea. It is a Afar triangle is the third lowest point on the earth. So let us move to the next question. Question number 12. Question number 12. The terms storefaction technology and happy cedar are associated with which of the following processes? It is an uh, agri related question. You have 30 seconds to answer. 
four options are option A improving fish seed, option B reducing stubble burning, option C reclamation of eutrophic water bodies, option C option D cloud seeding for the creation of artificial rain. Torrefaction and happy seeder are related to which of the following uh, processes. Time's up. I hope everyone will be aware of the correct answer. Uh, the correct answer is option B, reducing stubble burning. These are the techno torrefaction is a technology in which uh, the stubble wastes are burned in high temperature in a low oxygen environment. It was uh, uh, it, it is being used in uh, Punjab and Haryana in the recent years to, to reduce the pollution due to stubble burning. Torrefaction technology is related to stubble burning. Then coming to happy seeder, it is a machine which can be attached to the tractors which was developed by Punjab Agriculture University. It, which it can reduce the stubble wastages uh, in the crops such as uh, rice. So here the correct answer is. Uh, option B, torrefaction and happy cedar are related to stubble burning. So, 29 persons have given the correct answer for this question. More around 20 people have chosen uh, cloud seeding. I hope they are aware that uh, torrefaction and happy cedar are related to uh, stubble burning and not to artificial rain. Now, let us uh, see the scoreboard for this question. Maniandan has come to second, first position, Kalaiwanan is in the second position, Sujit 1, 2, 3 is in the third position, Karthik is in the fourth position, Sujit is in the fifth position. This is the status at the end of uh, 12 questions. We have three more questions to go in the quiz. I hope uh, there will be change and people will come up or go down. We will see let what happens as the quiz goes on. Now, let us go to the 13th question, 13th question of today's quiz. Cryptococcus neoformans aspergillus fumigatus candida albigans or what does these terms mean? Option A, fungal pathogens associated with serious risk of mortality. Option B, invasive alien species inhabiting Andaman Islands. Option C, multi drug resistant bacteria causing tuberculosis. Option D, endangered bird species endemic to Western Ghats. We have 5 more minutes, seconds to give the answer. Time's up. Correct answer is option A, fungal pathogens associated with serious risk of mortality. In the last few years, World Health Organization has published a fungal priority pathogens list FPPL World Health Organization's fungal prior, priority pathogens list in this in this list these pathogens are present these are fungal pathogens which can cause mortality that is death in human beings so be aware that cryptococcus neoformans aspergillus fumigatus and candida albigans are or fungal pathogens which can cause mortality Around 26 uh, persons have chosen the correct answer, 15 have given uh, uh, the answer as alien species, it is not alien species, it is fungal pathogens. Uh, now let us see the scoreboard for this question and see whether there is any change in the scoreboard. Manigandan has maintained this position at number 1, Kalaiwanan has maintained this position at number 2. Kavya Priya has actually come up, she is in position 3, Sujit 1, 2, 3 is in the 4th position, Karthik is in the 5th position. Manihan has given 3 correct answers in a row and he is back in the game. Let us see how it goes. Now let us go to the 14th question. 14th question of the today's quiz. Consider the following statements with reference to succession. Statement 1. When succession is brought about by living inhabitants of the community, the process is called allogenic succession. 
statement 2 the rate of secondary succession is relatively faster than the primary succession which of the above statements are correct statement uh, option a is one only option b is two only option c is both one and two option d is neither one nor two i repeat with consider the following statements with reference to succession statement one when succession is brought about by living inhabitants of a community the process is called allogenic succession statement two the rate of secondary succession is relatively faster than the primary succession you have five more seconds to give the correct answer four three two one zero the time's up here uh, the correct option is option b two only because first in the first question it is mentioned mentioned that as allogenic succession actually when succession is brought about by the living inhabitants of this community itself it is called as uh, autogenic succession if a factor from outside the community is coming into the community and uh, triggering the succession it is called as allogenic suc succession here the correct uh, answer is autogenic succession second second statement the rate of sec secondary succession is relatively faster than primary succession that is actually true primary succession needs many factors to start the process of succession but in the case of secondary succession there will be some factors which would have been affected by the event in between say like say forest fire and all so there is some factors which can start the succession so secondary succession is relatively faster than primary succession the answer is option b <coughs> sorry uh, 27 people have given the sorry 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 27 people have given the wrong answer as both 1 and 2 20 people have given the correct answer uh, i hope these 27 people read the correct uh, read the statements properly to choose the correct answer in their uh, exams now let us see the scoreboard for the question for this particular question Kalai Vanan has come to first position, Kavya Priya has come to second position, Maniandan has gone down to third position, Monisha has been a newcomer to top 5, she is in the fourth position, Shankari is in the fifth position. So this is uh, the status of scoreboard at the end of 14 questions. We have only one more question in this quiz. Uh, Let us see how it goes through. 15th question consider the following statements with reference to catalytic converters being fitted into automobiles catalytic converters statement 1 they use expensive metals such as platinum palladium and rhodium as catalysts statement 2 the exhaust when passed through a catalytic converter produces only water vapor and hydrogen as byproducts Statement 3. Motor vehicles ex equipped with catalytic converters should use unleaded petrol. How many of the above statements is are correct? Option A one only, sorry only one, option B only two, option C all the three, option D none of the above. You have 20 more seconds to give the correct answer. The question is about catalytic converter. Uh, which we see in uh, BS6 automobiles in recent times catalytic converter what does it mean 5 more seconds to give the correct answer 3 2 1 0 the time's up here the correct answer is option B only 2 2 statements are correct here let us see first statement is correct they use exp catalytic converters as a costly little bit costly equipment it uses platinum, palladium and rhodium as catalysts in, inside it. Then second one is the exhaust when passed through a catalytic converter produces only water vapor and hydrogen as byproducts. Actually only is uh, not correct. Water vapor and hydrogen is or byproducts along with uh, along with nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is also a byproduct from this uh, catalytic converter. So second statement is incorrect. Third statement, 
it is correct motor vehicles equipped with catalytic converters should use uh, unleaded petrol only so statement 3 is also correct so here correct answer is option b regarding catalytic converters now let us see 28 people have given the correct answer that is option b 14 people have given the given option c i hope uh, they come to know that there is also a byproduct called nitrogen gas from the catalytic converters there is uh, only water vapor and hydrogen are not byproducts nitrogen gas is also there so let us uh, move to the scoreboard at the end of the quiz today 15th question third position goes to kavya priya i congratulate her for the third position in this quiz second position goes to manigandan first position goes to kalaiwanan i congratulate kalaiwanan and other two people and all other participants of this quiz for giving correct answers and uh, hoping to improve their uh, skills regarding to upsc i hope everyone is uh, preparing well for their upcoming prelims examination let us uh, rock this examination congratulations and uh, thank you thank you